Looking to add more games to your Arcade 1UP Countercade? Well, this video is for you. This is going to be my tutorial video for Team Encoder's new hack for the Arcade 1UP Countercades. We're going to be modding the Marvel Super Heroes Arcade Cabinet to add thousands of more games. All you need is a USB thumb drive as well as a computer or laptop. First thing we're going to do is right click on our desktop to create a folder and we're going to just label this the Arcade 1UP Countercade hack. Next thing you're going to do is head over to the Team Encoder website. I'll have a link for this in the video description below. This is where you'll find the hacks for the pinball machines, uh, the uh, Arcade 1UP Junior cabinets, etc. It's important to note you need a full-size USB stick, no mini USB sticks, and that USB stick needs to be a minimum of 2 gigabytes in size. I'm going to be using a 64 gigabyte SanDisk Cruiser Glide as you scroll down the page, you'll see there's an individual hack for each particular Arcade 1UP Countercade. Since we're going to be hacking or modding the Arcade 1UP Marvel Super Heroes, this is the one we need. All we got to do is click on this link and download this file. Now, keep in mind, this is about a one and a half gigabyte file. So just doing a standard download off Mega is fine right to your PC. Should download in just a couple of minutes, depending on your internet speed. When it finishes downloading, because I have my downloads set to ask me where I want to stick them after they finish downloading, we're going to find that folder on our desktop that we created, the Arcade 1UP Countercade hack, and we're just going to drop the file in there. Once it's in that appropriate folder on my desktop, just going to right click on it and then use 7-Zip or another extraction tool and just extract here and just extract all the files. Should only take a few seconds. Once everything is extracted, it should look a little something like this. Now it's time for the fun part. Okay, make sure you hit this toggle switch off on the PCB board on the back of your countercade. Go ahead and also make sure that this is unplugged and powered off from the wall. You definitely don't want to have any power come into this thing. And go ahead and grab a micro USB to USB cable and go ahead and get this plugged into the port. Due to the awkward position of the PCB board on the Marvel Super Heroes cab, Probably need to unplug that little power adapter to get this in there. Should look like this when you're done. You could even plug this cable back in now that you got that uh, micro USB cable back in. As long as it's not plugged into the wall, you're not going to have any issues. With the other end of the cable connected to your PC, head over to the files you downloaded and launch the application, the file that says application. You'll see this text here as it connects to your countercade. As long as install drivers is uh, selectable, all you're going to do is click on install drivers. After you click on install drivers, a new window is going to pop up, which I'm going to drag and place right here. It says, what do you want to do? Do you want to install a driver or uninstall a driver onto this PCB board? So what we want to do is click on install driver and it'll say that the installation went through. All we have to do is click on OK. And when we close this window, the next box should be selectable. Once I closed out that window, option two becomes available, install the mystery hack to the PCB. So now the hack itself is being installed on the PCB board. It takes a minute or two, just let it run. You can watch the percentages go up until it's completed. Once it hits 100%, we're gonna be ready to do step number three, which is do an image on a USB drive. Once it hits 100%, it's time to install an image onto our USB drive, that blank USB drive you've had waiting on standby while everything goes through. With my blank USB drive plugged in, let's go ahead and click on it, and it's gonna say, where do you wanna install this image on this particular window? And luckily, make sure it has your thumb drive selected as the destination. And what'll happen here is when you click on that install button, it'll start running and the Batacera front end image will be installed on this flash drive. That's right, we're gonna be running a Batacera front end on this counter key. Make sure you click yes and it's off to the races. After a couple of minutes when it f finishes, you'll get this pop-up message here reminding you that ROMs are not included, just the blank image or build. So you will have to source and drop your own ROMs into the appropriate folders. So we're going to navigate over to our USB drive on our PC. We're going to click on the folder that says app data. And after we click on app data, we're going to click on ROMs. And you'll notice we got a whole bunch of folders here. There's a whole bunch of emulators files built into this build. All we have to do is find the appropriate ROMs for the appropriate emulator. 
So for instance, I primarily want to play arcade games on this little arcade countercade, so I'm going to open up the main folder. And because I'm feeling frisky, I'm going to grab about, oh, I don't know, 4,000 arcade ROMs. And I'm going to drag from my PC, and I'm just going to drop them right here into this folder. And boom, we're going to be ready to go And once it starts copying over. It's going to take a few minutes for all those uh, games to copy over. Okay, we're done on the PC. Safely eject that flash drive, remove this micro USB cable from the PCB, plug that power cable back in, turn the toggle switch back to the on position on the PCB, and you could go ahead and screw the backboard back onto the cabinet. Make sure your counter cade is plugged back into your wall outlet or power strip, grab that beautiful flash drive full of all that naughty goodness from the computer, and go ahead and plug that into the handy data USB port on the right hand side of the control panel and go ahead and turn the counter cade on and it will load the Batacera front end image. On the count of three everybody, one, two, three, ooh. The very, very first thing you want to do is hit that start button to map your control. So go ahead and hit player one start and it'll ask you to configure your inputs. You'll see that the Batacera front end detects multiple game pads. Just hold down a single button on the player one side you can go ahead with your joystick, just push up, down, left, right, map your joystick, hit the player one start button for your start button. Now you'll notice, unlike a bunch of retro pie or Raspberry Pi builds, we can hit the player one start and go ahead and map that, but when it comes to the select button or hotkey, what did we usually have to do with those builds, guys? We usually had to add an extra button to our cabinets. We don't have an extra button. So when it comes to this particular front end for now, what you're going to have to do is kind of stick with four, four button arcade games or four button games at the most on many systems. Obviously, when it comes to those six button fighters, you're probably not going to be able to get those up and running just yet. So I would just map one of your uh, six buttons as your uh, select or hotkey button and go ahead and map A, B, X, Y, and then just hold down the buttons to skip through the rest. And then your hotkey button, just map it as the same button as your whatever you chose as your select button. I did speak with Team Encoder, and they're going to look at updating this build to give us the ability to map button combinations, such as hitting two buttons at once to equal a hotkey, since we don't want to have to drill and add another button to this system. And technically, we really don't want to do that. We just want to use all the stock controls. So look for an update coming soon. Six button games coming soon, but for now, we're going to just stick with uh, four button games until we can get this fixed. From the main menu and scrolling the various systems, you'll see I installed over 4,000 arcade games under the main category. And under Nintendo, I went ahead and I put the entire Nintendo library in there as well. Now, of course, these are not internet connected machines. So when it comes to scraping box art or images, unfortunately, this build doesn't have that feature, nor can you access the internet on this device to download that stuff. Your volume slider uh, will work, but you have to push it. It won't work as a slider anymore. You have to keep pushing a bunch of times to make the volume go up, a bunch of times to make the volume go down, but you're not gonna be able to scrape artwork or things like that. So unfortunately the games are gonna look like this for right now, no box arts, etc. Kind of boring and bland in my opinion, but hey, it is what it is until we can like put together a community build with a bunch of artwork attached, etc. With your controls mapped, you're ready to go to start playing some games, man. And a lot of games will run on this particular console, but don't expect, you know, to be running PlayStation 5 on here, but a lot of the retro arcade games and console games will run. And again, I would stick with uh, games that utilize four buttons or less until Team Encoder releases a new update that gives you the ability to uh, find another way to map the hotkey using a combination of buttons, because we're one button short on this control panel to make sure we have the ability to play all those six button fighting games. And one of the coolest things is because everything is running right through this USB stick here is if you remove the USB stick and just go ahead and power on your arcade device, what's really cool there is it will just power up and load the standard stock system and games. So that's really cool in my opinion. You could uh, you know, have it stock if you wanna play the stock games or you could plug in the USB stick and run your modified build. My final thoughts are this is a pretty cool build. Got some opportunity for improvement. Maybe some folks out there can make some pre-made images. We can get some artwork on these builds and all that stuff. Otherwise, because uh, I don't have time to do all that stuff. 
Other thing too is if you try to do a clean shutdown here, when you hit the start, go down the shutdown system, you'll notice that because that power button is turned on, it'll automatically reboot the system and it'll reboot it into Batasera. It doesn't do a clean shutdown. So what you have to do is hit start shutdown and when it's shutting down, once it hits that black screen, go ahead and flip that toggle switch to off in order to power this device off. Otherwise, it'll just keep rebooting back into Batasera. So right there, we flip it to off and it's off. Overall, a very cool hack. Thanks so much, Team Encoder. Let me know what you guys think. Leave me your comments, feedback, reactions below. And as always, my dudes, thank you for subscribing.